Today's lesson, well, it's all about rhythm. Hey folks, Zoobs here with another video, and today we're going to be working on a Fox Rhythm Float 34 Grip Fork. So we are going to be working on the lowers, the air spring, and the damper, okay? We're going to be fully servicing this thing. So it is going to be a little bit of a long video. I'm going to break it out into parts and pieces to try and make it as easy as possible to follow. Not a hard job. In fact, the 50 hour, the lowers, you should be doing on a regular basis. Every 50 hours, you're just doing yourself a favor by servicing them because, I mean, one, they just feel so much better when they're freshly serviced, and two, it helps protect the sanctions, right? <clears throat> air spring, I mean, you have your options over there. You could do it with the, once you get used to the air spring, I mean, it's real quick. You're just doing a fresh greasing more than anything. Uh, you don't have to change out seals every 50 hours, but you can do that every 100 hours. I mean, it's up to you at that point, right? But I would keep up with the air spring. Once you get used to it, it goes by real quick. The damper is going to be the more involved part, just like always with Fox, right? There's just a lot of parts and pieces when it comes to the damper, not impossible. But still, I mean, it's going to take a little bit of time. And then we have the whole bleed portion that's, uh, well, I mean, that takes its own time with a Fox fork as well. Okay. So with that being said, let's go on to the parts and the tools needed for the job. So as I mentioned, this is going to be somewhat of a long video, definitely done in parts, right? And I'm going to break it out in four sections, right? One is the beginning of the 50 hour service, which is basically taking everything apart. Next, we'll be working on the air spring, then working on the damper, and then the end of the 50 hour service, which is putting the lowers back on, okay? So for starters, we're gonna work with the 50 hour, we're gonna look at the 50 hour tools and parts, okay? Let's start off with the parts. So we are going to need a, well, you might not need it, but in this case I am. This is a uh, new fork. It was bought uh, from a, uh, by a buddy of mine for his wife. We don't know the history of it. I'm just gonna do a complete rebuild on it, right? So um, ultimately you will need, in our case, a wiper kit. And that wiper kit is 8030945. You might not need it. You might be able to salvage your wipers if they're actually in good shape. There's no reason to change them out. If your foam rings are in good shape, you just clean those out, let them saturate in oil, and you'll be good to go for at least another 50 hours, all right? We will need shrimp butter, and we will need 20 weight oil for the lowers, okay? Outside of that, as far as tools. So, for starters, we're going to need uh sockets 10 millimeter and a 15 millimeter socket in order to remove the screws the bolts from the bottom of the shock and then we're going to need you're also going to need a ratchet with your sockets and then what comes in handy this isn't a necessity these are essentially um, adapters to help you separate the inner shafts from the lower body of the shock okay you could separate it without these but these definitely make it safer and easier to do right and with these in order to get it done a mallet comes in handy, right? So at that point, the lowers are gonna be off and we're gonna need some kind of tool. You could use a wrench. Personally, I love this ice tools for removing wipers on a fork. I've yet to chip or damage the finish of a fork with this thing, right? So knock on wood now that I said it, but ultimately these things work good, but you could use a regular wrench. Just be very careful with a wrench that you don't chip or damage, uh, well, I don't wanna say damage, but you know, chip and aesthetically damage. Uh, the lower boot on the fork. So we will need a cup in order to soak our foam rings in, right? We're gonna put a little bit of oil in here, let the foam rings soak in there. And when it's time to insert them, we'll be good to go. You're gonna need an oil pan in order to drain the oil, right? And then we're gonna need alcohol, towels, and a dowel in order to be able to clean the inside of the lowers, all right? So from there, it's gonna be time to put on the wipers. Ultimately, we have a wiper tool that makes a wiper installation tool that makes life a lot easier, right? You just put it on and you smack it down until you hit that required depth, which this thing pretty much does automatically. So it's real nice to have. Uh, there are other options out there. Many companies make these now. Back when I bought these quite a while ago, actually, um, there weren't that many options and they were definitely pricier than they are today, right? We're going to need a torque wrench in order to close everything back down. And then ultimately we are going to need an air pump to pump the shock back up. All right. So that is what's needed if you were to do just the 50 hour service. Next, we're going to go into the tools needed for the air spring side. 
Before we get into the air spring tools and parts, I forgot to mention that for the 50 hour service, we also need a two millimeter Allen in order to loosen the bolt that holds the rebound knob uh, in place. All right, so that will be needed. Leave it on the side. 50 hour, uh, air spring service. For starters, we're gonna need a 26 millimeter chamferless, a flat socket. You absolutely want a flat socket. There's a lot of risk in stripping the bolt that actually holds in the air spring if you use a chamfered socket. Chamfered meaning it has edges, like angles, actually. This is completely flat. You definitely want a flat socket. Go buy an angled one, worst case scenario, and shave it down, or try and find one of these chamferless. You could find them around. You can get them for de decent prices, so. But you definitely want that, 26 millimeters, right? We are gonna need picks. Then, when we open it up, we will absolutely be needing a vise, and we will need vice jaws. I forgot which size we need. Something tells me it's the 12 millimeter, to be honest. We'll figure that one out when we get to that point, right? We're gonna need a dowel, alcohol, and paper towels to clean the inside of the stanchion, right? The air spring stanchion, basically. And we will need, again, picks in order to take out seals. We will need a 12 millimeter wrench to take out a bolt in order to take out a piston head. And then when we close it up, we're going to need a 12 millimeter crow foot. We're going to need this bullet tool. Now, technically, you don't need it, but I would say that you really sort of do need it in the sense that it's so much safer inserting um, the piston with a new, the piston inside, basically the air piston inside has a quad ring and those things have sharp edges and the axle that it goes into or the shaft that it goes into has sharp edges and you take high risk in actually tearing that seal that we're gonna change. And you don't wanna do that basically, right? After all that work. So these little bullet tools, they come in very, very handy. All right, I'll put the part number in the comment section. So, I mean, in the description section. Uh, we are gonna need heat in order to be able, most likely need heat in order to be able to remove the bolt for us to remove the piston, right? Then we're gonna need to uh, reinstall everything. We're gonna need Loctite 77, just a drop of it to hold that bolt that we're gonna remove uh, to hold it in place. And uh, that's pretty much it for the parts, right? Now, as far as, I mean, for the tools, as far as parts, there is a seal kit specific to the Fox 34 float, right? Part number 8030963. So typical seal kit for a 34 uh, Fox fork. And that's pretty much it for the air spring. Next, we go over the damper tools. As for the damper, so there's a whole different set of tools that's gonna to be needed here in addition to the 50 hour tools, right? We need to open up the lower in order to be able to pull out the damper, right? So for starters, in my case, I'm gonna need a two millimeter Allen in order to remove the little bolt that holds the compression knob, right? If you have a remote, it'll be a little bit different than what I'm gonna be doing. So we're gonna need a 26 millimeter chamferless socket again in order to remove the damper itself from the upper body, right? Now you will need a vise for this for sure and you will need soft jaws, right? Um, I don't remember which size. We'll figure that one out. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need the grip. In fact, I know I'm going to need the grip on this side, but I forgot. I think it's the nine millimeter that we will be needing for the uh, for the, the the damper shaft, right? So from there, uh, seven millimeter wrench be needed in order to take out. I believe, if memory serves me correct, this is for the compression knob to take out the whole shaft, right? Then we, when we take out the shaft, uh, we will separate the, uh, well, we will take apart the upper part, the compression part of the damper uh, in order to get to the IFP. We're gonna need an eight millimeter socket for that, right? We're gonna need picks to change seals. You will need some small tub to put the oil in because oil is gonna wanna come out at that point, right? So then we're gonna close it all back up together and we're gonna go down to the damper side and we need a 19 millimeter wrench and a crow's foot basically in order to remove the damper head, right? To replace the damper head. From there, we're gonna need a nine millimeter shaft to a uh, wrench and crow's foot in order to take out a damper shaft from the damper body basically, right? So we could change our damper head. We need the bullet, 10 millimeter bullet basically over here so we could insert the damper head without damaging it. Like I said, you could do it without this, but you take a major risk if you have a socket that fits the damper shaft perfectly and it's rounded on top, that can work as well. But these bullet tools, you can get them on eBay 
aftermarket for real cheap, so I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, so, the, oh yeah, and you're gonna need a dowel and alcohol and paper towel in order to clean the stanchion and the upper body, basically, right? So, or at least the inside of the upper body. We will be needing both red and blue Loctite for this particular shuck. I got Loctite 277, you could use two, what is that, 263, I think the other one, and I'm using 243 for uh, the damper head, basically. So, as far as, Parts. So there is a seal kit, right? So part number, um, where is it? There, sorry, wrong side. 803-01-320. This is a 2019 rhythm grip damper, okay? We're going to need a little bit of ceram butter, just a little bit, and we definitely will be filling it up with five weight oil, right? Now I have this little... Um, Dispenser over here. You can buy them a dollar store. I think it's like two for a buck, three for a buck. They come in handy actually when it comes to filling up uh, forks and shocks with oil. And that is pretty much it. If I'm missing anything, which I don't think I am, we'll go over it in the video. All right. Next, let's open up a fork. Before we begin, just a reminder that when working on a fork or a shock, make sure that you clean any dirt that might be hiding in like, you know, hidden places basically. Well, that's a little redundant, but for instance, inside the upper steer tube, there could be mud packed in there, right? There could be mud packed or dirt packed uh, over here where the, the lower bolts or the lower shaft bolts are that you might not see. The last thing you wanna do is without realizing it, have dirt fall into the lowers while you have it assembled and you're reassembling with fresh grease and all that stuff, right? That could wreak havoc on your stanchion if you get dirt or any kind of debris inside the actual shock. So just give it a good cleaning before we start opening it up, okay? So for starters, what we do is typically release the air. We take a measurement as far as what pressure is in there right now. I don't have to do this. This is uh, off a bike that was just purchased from a buddy of mine for his wife. This whole shock is gonna be completely reset for her. So I honestly don't care what the air pressure is or the rebound setting for. So for me, I don't have to write that down, but for you, you're better off writing it down, taking the air pressure and the rebound clicks as uh, for the rebound setting, counting the clicks uh, before opening up the shock in order to get it as close as possible to what it was before opening it, okay? So again, for me, I don't have to worry about it, but I still have to remove air. And to do that, I'm gonna grab a little bit of towel. I'm gonna put it over the Schrader valve, and then we're gonna slowly down. Actually, I think this can be, I should grab the other one like a bonehead. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna slowly let the air out. All right, slowly let it out. There's no rush here. You don't want it to just come rushing out. The slower, the better. We want air to come out from both chambers, positive and negative. All right, we're gonna squeeze it. Fortunately, you're not going to be able to see this, but I'm just going to put pressure on it in order to compress it and get all the air out. Pop this out, do it once, do it twice. All right, extend it all the way, and we should be good. There we go. So that takes care of the air. Now the rebound. So we have a rebound knob over here and it has a two millimeter screw on it. We need a two millimeter Allen just to loosen it. Do not take it out. Just loosen it to a point where it comes out just like that. Okay, we're gonna take both of these and we're gonna put them on the side. We will not need them until this entire job is done. Next, we will grab our 10 millimeter socket and we are going to loosen the bolts at the bottom of the legs. Okay, counterclockwise. Should be relatively easy. Shouldn't be too much pressure here. Okay, and then we're gonna take out the bolts. Bolt one, or the nuts, I should say. We're gonna take out our nuts. All right, and not two. And if you notice for this rhythm, for this year rhythm, these are the exact same. It's pretty rare, usually it's 10 and 15. So both of them are identical, one less than. So 
Next, we're gonna grab one of our shafts and we're gonna screw it in. And we're only gonna screw it in about, let's say three full turns, just like that. Okay, then we're gonna give it a tap. All right. I'm gonna do the other one. There we go. That one definitely moved. So now we're gonna grab our oil pan and see if it's totally out. Yep. Well, there's one of the crush washers that we will be changing. All right. Okay, so I am going to let this drain for now. I'm not gonna sit here and watch the whole process. And next what we will do is start working and cleaning out the lowers. All right, I will be back. So before we continue, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our little container and we're gonna put our foam rings inside. Then we're gonna take our 20 weight oil we're going to cover them. Don't worry about putting too much. We're going to use the extra for the fork. When we close the fork up, now press them down, squish them down real good so they could absorb oil. When you compress them, the more they absorb. We want these things to be fully, fully saturated. All right. This stuff is real sticky. It's almost like honey. So, uh, well, not exactly like honey, but it's pretty sticky. All right, so then what we're gonna do is close this up and just let it sit there until the time comes when we need to put them inside the lower boot. All right, we will take our, um, our wipers. We're gonna put them on top, on the side as well, I should say. And the rest of the parts we won't need until the end of the 50 hour service. Okay, so next what we are going to do is start working on the upper of the lower body. So what we wanna do is take out the foam rings that are in there and take out the wipers and then clean everything as much as we can inside, all right? So as far as taking out the foam rings that are in there, we're gonna take a pick. Just gonna grab the foam rings. These aren't in too bad shape. Believe it or not, these are reusable. They're actually in decent shape. Or at least that one's in decent shape. Let's see what this one looks like. This one as well, They could. this one could be clean. I mean, you're better off changing them, but this can be clean, dried, and then resaturated in oil and reused. They're not in all that bad shape, okay? Now, when it comes to taking out the wipers, again, I have this tool. You could use a regular wrench, like a large wrench, but large wrenches could chip the lower body over here, right? Uh, or at least in this area, wherever you apply it. With this guy, we just put them underneath. The only thing is, being on a table, I don't have much leverage because of height. There we go. That's one. And two. Done. These are the old wipers. Like I said, I have no idea how old they are, but they are getting tossed out because we got new ones, okay? So next what we want to do is clean the inside of the lower bodies. So before we continue with cleaning the inside, one thing you want to do is look at the bottom of the lowers. These are crush washers. Sometimes they stick onto the nuts at the bottom of uh, the, 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 well, the lowers that screw into the shafts. Sometimes they stick onto the actual lowers, like this one was stuck on the lower. So just make sure that you take a look at for these, make sure they're not stuck on the lowers before we move forward, all right? So let's put this stuff in, those two in the garbage, this one on the side. Now, the way I clean my lowers, first, I put a good amount of alcohol in there. Actually, first let's clean the outside up here real well. Definitely make sure that we don't have any kind of excess dirt that might fall in. Eh, that was actually pretty clean. So fill it up with alcohol. Well, fill it up. Put a lot of alcohol in there, a good amount. And then just shake it in order to break up any oil that's in there. Shake it real well. Just keep on shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking it. All right? We just want to break up any old oil and then 
any get any debris that might be stuck above to pour out the bottom, right? So we'll do that once. And twice. Done. Then we're gonna grab our dowel. We're gonna take some paper towel. We're gonna wrap it around the dowel, leave some excess on top, just like that, right? And then what I do is I take rubber band and then I split some of the dowel to create like a mop, basically. And we put it in, turning clockwise first, bring it to the bottom, and then slowly turn it counterclockwise, rotate it, let it sit there at the bottom so it could absorb any oil and uh, alcohol that we just sprayed in there. The whole idea is to get this clean, right? So There's a very easy job. Once you get used to doing this, it goes by real quick. You should do it every 50 hours or so, depending on where you ride and how much you ride, right? Conditions, whether it's like really rainy, very dusty, Dusty, I think, might be worse than rain, to be honest. Okay, so. So you pretty much get the message on that one, right? I do it twice per side, basically. I'm gonna spray it again with oil. I mean with oil, with alcohol, right? I'm gonna grab a new cloth on my dowel and clean the inside again. All right, so I don't have to sit here and record this whole thing you pretty much should get the idea. It's what you should do. Well, it's a good thing to do for years as well, okay? So twice, alcohol, towels, rub, clean, absorb, and done until you're finished, all right? I'm gonna finish this up so I don't have to tape it, uh, tape it and waste more time over here, okay? So we clean the lowers, right? Again, recap, we spray it down with alcohol, shake it around, empty it, take paper towel with a dowel, plastic, rubber band, Mop it all up in there real good. Do it once again, empty it out, mop it up real good, and you are done once you do both sides. Now, we're not gonna install the wiper yet, nor the seals yet. We will do that after we are done with the air spring and the damper as the part two of the 50 hour service. Right now is the part one, which was basically just disassembly and cleaning. If we were to only do the 50 hour service right now, we would put in the foam rings, the spring, and reassemble the lowers and you are done. 50 hours are real quick. Again, do them regularly. You're only doing yourself a favor, okay? But for now, I'm gonna take this guy and put him on the side because next we are going to work on the air spring. First, we grab our 26 millimeter chamferless. Again, we want this flat, okay? It makes it a lot easier. Basically, we take this and we are going to unscrew it. And there's a lot of torque over here. I want to say 24, if not 28. So it might be a little bit tough. There we go. Good snap, but from that point on, it becomes easy. Okay. Until it becomes very easy. We could do it by hand. Yeah. And we take it out and we have one little baby token. We will take this guy, put him on the side for now. So, one thing to note, uh, this is the damper side. Sometimes oil gets trapped at the top part or sticks to the walls on the top part and slowly leaks out. And while you're working on the air spring and this guy's here, it will drip everywhere. You can put some towel in there in order to stop the dripping, right? To control it so it doesn't get all over you and all over the place. Next, we take out the retaining clip. Now the retaining clip, if you look at it carefully, you can't see it all that well, I think in a camera, but it has a flat side and an angled side. What we want to do is get under the angle side, a little pick of this type, basically. You could use a sharp pick or a regular pick. It's just a little bit easier to get underneath the angle side with a pick like this, okay? And basically, if I can find the angle side now, there it is. So basically we just want to get the angle side and we just want to pick it up. This is not exactly a seat clip, it's sort of wound in there, but we just want to pop it out just like that. All right, boom, done. This guy is out. Now, we're gonna give it a good jolt and pull out our hairspring. 
and that is our air spring. All right. So first, oh, it stinks. Holy cow. Yeah, it smells like fish. So first we're going to clean out all the excess grease over here. Take that all out. See, the grease gets dirty in there, man. Okay. Clean it all out real well. Grab all the grease off that you can. All right. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is clean this guy and then the inside of this guy, and then we will take apart the air spring. Cleaning this guy is simple enough. We're gonna take some paper towel, we'll bunch them up, because the first shot is always gonna be the messiest. We're gonna take our dowel, we're gonna bring him out the other side, and he should be filled with grease just like that. All right, oops, sorry for shaking the camera. Put him on the side. Then, see that's one thing to notice again, dirt gets trapped in small areas. We don't want to bring that inside. So we're going to grab a paper towel if you can see that dirt. So let's basically try and shake them up outside. All right, and since it's over there, what I'm going to do now is take alcohol, spray it in there and let it fall out the other side and take that dirt with it. We're going to grab another paper towel, bunch them up. Stuff them in there. There we go. And then push them through. Take a look at him. Oh, he's clean. He's spotless in there. All right, not sure if you can see that, but he's real clean. So this portion is done. Next, we will work on disassembling the air spring so we could change a seat. Well, we're going to change this seal in this quad ring, but there is another quad ring on the inside of this piston and we need to change that. That's imperative that that gets changed because look at the play, right? When this wears, there's a lot of play in there and that's not good. Okay, time to take apart the air spring. We are basically going to remove this bolt from this shaft, okay? And before we start, what we want to do is make sure that it is clean before we put it into the shaft so it doesn't spin around we're gonna need a 10 millimeter hole in the shaft, All right? So take this guy, don't crush him down, just turn him. Now, on here is a seal. We wanna take out that seal, all right? Let's go in there and poke it out, try not to tear it. Come on, there we go. Take him, roll him out, and we're gonna put him on the side. We're gonna find his replacement later. The reason we're not gonna do this now is because we are going to apply a little bit of heat. Look at this guy there. We're gonna apply a heat on this guy, and we are gonna use our 12 millimeter wrench to loosen him. All right. That should do it. There we go. Come on. It's got Loctite red in here, so he will be a little bit stiff. The whole idea for the heat is to loosen up the Loctite red. Let's take him and screw him. Just make sure that the bottom, the rest of the shaft isn't spinning as you're turning him out, as you're turning him. So. And there we go. So first we want to clean out all the Loctite that's on here, okay? There's also another seal in here that we are going to change. We also want to clean out the Loctite that's on the inside. It's the best way you could do that because that's going to want to fall out. We don't want it to go any deeper. Let's turn it upside down. Roll one of these things in here. And then, do that exactly the way I did that. 
No, don't do that exactly the way I did that. Okay. All right, let's do it one more time. Then screw them in there and then slippery man. All right, let's take a look. Yep, he is now clean. So there's still some Loctite residue here. What you can do is take a, a brush. We could use metal over here since it is metal and just try and scrape off whatever Loctite residue there is, or at least metal brush. See, gone. Oh, gone. One last thing. So now we have another seal over here that we want to take out my premiums. Okay, so we have two seals. Those are old ones. Let's replace them with the new ones. So if I look over here, this guy is definitely this guy up here. So, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I took the seals out of the air spring seal kit and I organized them by size, okay? So this was the old one, this is the new one. Now, we are gonna take a little bit of grease, always with the grease when it comes to seals. A little bit of SRAM butter in this case. And this one goes on the bottom, or on the inside, just like that, boom. Then we're gonna take this guy, the other old one, and his replacement was right underneath. So that's the old one. This is the new one. Come on. Take him, a little bit of grease on him. And he goes on the opposite side. Just like, make sure he flips over the edge. Just like that. So this guy is done. Now, here's our piston, or our, well, our piston, really almost like an IFP really. Okay, so we have a seal on the outside and we have a quad ring on the inside. And that's the important one. That's, well, they're all important, but that's the one we really need to get at with the air spring service. Any lack of performance is based on this guy wearing out. All right, ta-da, there's our quad ring. All right, so let's find a new quad ring. That guy there is it? This guy here. It's gotta be this guy here. Let's put them on top of each other. Ah, oh, that's deceiving. Yeah. It's this guy here. That's the new one. So we're gonna put a little bit of grease on him. And we're gonna tuck him in actually make life easier, what we're gonna do. Take a little bit of grease, put them on the inside. All right. Then we're gonna flip this guy through, put them, squeeze them, push them through until one side sits in, tuck him into a seat, just like that. Nearly in, oh. Too much. Let's try that again. Put them in. All right. Yeah. There we go. Oh, Adam. All right. Get one side in. Pop this side in. There we go. And now the bottom side. What we need to make sure is that he's not twisted when he goes inside. Just like that. Perfect. So then we got the big seal. It's pretty evident that this guy is the new big seal. Put a little bit of grease on him. Put him on the outside. And boom, our IFP is done. Then the only thing we have left is this quad ring. Be careful that you don't scratch the plastic. Just grab the quad ring, pull them out. This is his replacement. Put a good amount of grease on this guy on the inside. 
I can put some grease on the inside over here. It doesn't hurt. All right. And then again, when you put them in, just make sure he's not twisted. Perfect. And that is it for our seals on the air spring. Now we assemble them back up again. Put them back in our vise. Just had a camera overheat issue and we are back. So next we are putting in the IFP. Now in order to do that, again, this bullet tool comes in handy. You can do it without the bullet tool, but this is a sharp edge and quad rings have, well, uh, sharp edges and you could tear the quad ring real easy. You need something to sp spread the quad ring when putting it in. That's where this tool comes uh, into play, right? Take a little bit of grease, just put it on the tool and slide this guy over and boom. Done, nice and safe. And then we are done with our tool. Okay, wipe the grease off them. Now next, we wanna put this guy back on. Okay, so we have the fine threads and the, th the, th the, 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 the less fine threads for crying out loud. Uh, we wanna put the fine threads on the inside to do this. We're going to need some Loctite Red. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of Loctite Red and we're going to put it on the inside so this way it doesn't stick anywhere on the outside. Be very careful. You just want one quick drop. You don't need anything too much over you. Just one quick drop, just like that. Literally one small drop. Now we're going to take this guy. We're going to screw him in by hand. Always by hand first. Okay, you know I can do it by hand, I know I'm in, and then we're going to take him until it ends, till we stop. All right, now the whole thing's moving, and then we're going to take our torque wrench, crow's foot, 90 degree angle, 5.7 newton meters. Take them and done, 5.8, not too bad. Okay, our air spring is complete. We have one more seal on the upper cap that we wanna change. Okay, so we're gonna take this guy and this is his replacement right there. Take some grease, put them on here. Take this guy and slide him into, probably because you're doing it this way. Am I in frame? Yes, I am in frame. And take him. Boy, man, I thought it was going to be easier doing it this way. Jeez. Okay, and pop him into his seat all the way around. There we go. All seals in the air shaft, or in the air spring, are changed. Time to put the air spring back into the upper body. Next, we put the air spring into the upper body, right? So first we're gonna grab grease. We're gonna coat, just put a thin layer of coat on the inside, as far as your finger can reach, of the upper body. All right. Now, we're gonna put a thick layer of coat, thick layer of grease on the air spring. Just like that. Okay. Grease here is your friend. Up and down the shaft. Okay. Now. Push everything to the top, okay? Then we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna insert him. We might have to wobble him in there. This part here is gonna be the hardest part. And we're gonna put him in just like that. And he is in all the way, all right? So let's clean up some of his grease. Let's make our lives easier. Next, we're gonna take 
a retaining ring. It's almost like a keychain. Not a big fan of it. I like the other ones better. We're going to take this guy and we need to install him in his seat. This guy is going to be tricky because basically what you have to do is sort of roll it in. So you need to find basically the, like I said, it's like a key ring. So what we want to do is install this part first until he fits in and then roll the rest around roll the rest around. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of this design. I like the other one better. So, with this guy, make sure he falls in the seat. Once he's in the seat, the rest should follow. There we go. Roll him all the way around. And done. There we go. All right. All pressure going down. We have no suck up whatsoever. Next, we're going to put a little bit of oil on the top part in the inside, right? What we're going to do is grab a syringe. We're going to grab three cc's. We're just going to grab the oil, suck it in, which is surprisingly hard with this oil because it's pretty thick oil, right? So, Three cc's. Where are we? That's five. Oh. Put them down before I spill them. Could you guys see? Three cc's is right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. And that's it. Put them on the inside. It's amazing how hard it is to squeeze out. Like I said, this stuff's real thick. Come on, get out. Uh, done. Yep. Close him up. Make sure we don't make a mess. Then we're going to take our cap. down by hand, always by hand first. Right. And then this guy, I believe, 20 four newton meters. Where's this guy? He's at 28. It's probably from a previous fork, I bet. So 24 newton meters. Be careful here. Again, it's a lot of pressure, not that much metal to grab, and it's pretty slippery. All right, so hold on to it. See what I mean? Try and hold on to him pressing downwards to help you out like that. 24.3, technically is 24.8, so we are good. All right. Our air spring is fully serviced. Don't need to fill them up with air yet. We will do that later. But outside of that, he is completely done. Next, we move on to the damper. Now for the damper. So you might have a remote. If, it's a, if you have a remote, it's a little bit different, basically. Real simple. You just unscrew one bolt and the whole remote will come out, right? In my case, I have a compression knob. I am going to unscrew with a two millimeter Allen. I'm going to take out this bolt. Hands are all slippery. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to pull this guy straight up. One thing is, you got to watch out when you pull him straight up. Okay, I mean, technically, he should be pulled straight up. There we go. So now, on the inside here, he is clear. There is nothing on the inside on this one. One less thing. Next, we take our 26 millimeter, chamferless, again, flat sided, and we want to unscrew this guy. Use a table as leverage, he will be stiff. Make sure you put the 
this guy here so we don't lose. There we go. Come on. Ta-da! And there's our damper. So, again, let's take this screw, put it inside the cap so we don't lose him. And we get inside the cap. And we're gonna take him, we're gonna put him on the side. First, we are going to clean out the inside of the tube, which is real easy. Just grab a little bit of alcohol, spray him down. And scrunch this guy up. And again, grab a towel and push him through. And he is, well, actually could use a little bit more, surprisingly. Make sure you clean the threads real well. Try it one more time. Yep, clean. We're gonna put him on the side. We don't need him for a while. Next, we're going to work on the damper. First, let's just clean up all the oil from the outside. All right. And we are ready to take her apart. Next, we are removing this top cap. Again, 26 millimeter chamferless. Put it in a vise. Make sure you clean the outside of oil uh, best you can so it doesn't slide around in the vise, okay? You're definitely gonna need a vise for this. Okay, it be a little bit tighter. There we go. All right. This takes a while. Eventually, eventually. There we go. Now we can do it by hand. some towel. We got to lift this up and I might make an oily mess. Just sort of slide it up. All right. Sort of like upwards like that. The only thing is on the bottom over here, oil might pop out with it. And oil popped out at the bottom. Great. Something went awry with this, that's for sure. Did not unscrew the way it should have. Oh, you know what? I think it took up, yeah, it took up the shaft with it from the suction. That's what happened. There we go. So now let's take them and pop them out. And that is our IFP assembly for our upper shaft. All right. Let me clean up this mess. This was unexpected. I didn't expect this to come out the way it did down here. This should have came out later. So, but... No issues at all. Next, we are gonna take out whatever oil is left on the inside. All right. And this should have happened from before. Okay. This guy is empty. Again, properly dispose of oil, just collect it, put it in a case, and then bring it to your local bike shop or an auto zone or something like that. They'll know what to do with it. All right, so next we change the seals. 
in our IFP. There is an IFP on the inside. It has a quad ring inside and a couple of other seals on the outside like you see over here, okay? Next, we're gonna unthread the compression needle, all right? So we're gonna take this counterclockwise and thread them until the whole thing pulls out. And there's a seal that we will replace up there. And let me grab a bigger one of these guys just in case, because I'm gonna actually I'm gonna grab a blue one to get some kind of contrast because we're gonna take things apart. Then what we're gonna do on flat jaws, we're gonna clamp two flat sides of this guy together. Okay, just like that. Don't over tighten him. He doesn't need to be tightened all that much. All he's gonna be used for is to remove this bolt over here. And then one by one, we're gonna take apart the assembly. We don't have a choice but to take it apart one by one over here, okay? So we're gonna start off with an eight millimeter socket. Okay, we're gonna unscrew this. There you go, just loosen it. Okay. You should be able to do the rest by hand. If not, nope, I can't do it by hand yet. There we go. Hopefully you can see that well. There we go. Okay, so now we start the assembly. Be careful over here. We have this nut. We have our spring. We have our lifting plate shim. This is just one shim, okay? Put that aside, put it all in order. Now, we have our compression. I forgot the name of this thing, but this has a seal that needs to get changed. Okay. We have this washer. Three shims, technically, not washer. So we have three shims over here. All right. Four shims. See what I mean? Shims are real thin. You got to watch out. Just leave them in order. We came down like this and put them down in the order you took them out. Okay. So. Then we have this cap. Inside here is a seal that needs to get replaced. All right, so then we push this down and we have our pin that holds our IFP in place. Okay, we take this pin and we put it second row. And then we take out our whole mechanism here, separate them out. And this guy should separate. Just like that. All right, and we have another seal in here. So, if you notice this part's rounded and thin, this one's thicker, the thick one goes up. So this goes inside here, just like that. All right, so he fits inside there, just like that. So, let's leave him aside. So, that is the order. The rest, we really don't have to do anything with the rest, okay? Next, I'm gonna grab the seal kit, put it in order, and we're gonna start replacing seals. First, let's clean by taking the oil off these threads. All right. All right. Now, now we start changing seals. First, we're gonna start with our IFP. On our IFP, we have seal on the outside, but more importantly, we have the seal on the inside. Okay, so the seal on the inside is right there. It's closer to the bottom part, basically. So just grab it and hook it out. There we go. Oh, oh, nearly had it. All right. So that's the one seal on the outside, the inside. Now we grab the seal on the outside. There we go. sure that there's it feels like there's another seal in there but I don't think so I'm not 100% sure to be honest I don't think so anyway so let's find the replacement seals we got this guy here so I put all the seals I open up the seal kit put them all in order by size right to make it easier to find and that definitely is the new one on the outside and this one here is most likely the new one on the inside. 
All right. So take a little bit of grease on each. Okay. That's uh, only that one seal. Okay, so this one might be, he doesn't need to go that deep. It's only about four millimeters in, maybe less actually. We just need to get him on the seat on the inside first. Oh, there we go. And then this is where these little flat tools come in handy. We could tuck them in and roll them. And that's that side. And now just push him in. Just like actually flat side might be easier on this one. Oop, nearly there. Now I got him. Do I have them? Yes, I do. And then we put the one on the outside. All right, this guy is done. So then we take our spring isolator. This is our IFP. Again, if you notice, there's like uh, dimples over here. Okay, this side's flat. And we need to find a dimple part and sink it in until he is like that. And we put this guy in just like this. All right. And then we take our pin and we put him back in to hold him in place. Put him in the middle and boom. That guy is done. So now we have this piece over here and there is a seal on the inside. Okay, right over here that we want to change since we are here. My hands are really slippery. There we go. Seal is out. Find a replacement seal. There's got to be that guy over there. Old one. New one. Grease. Tuck him in, and he should squeeze in pretty easy. Where's this guy? Come on. Right in there. That's one side. Oop. Well, I hope the camera doesn't overheat. Okay. That's it on that side. Not good. I wonder if it's going to be easier to do them on this side, to be honest. Come on. There we go. Definitely easier on this side. Oh, without a doubt, too, he's almost in. And he's in. Cool. Then this guy goes on top, just like that. And then we put our washers, our shims, we had stacked them. Put them in the order that we stacked them. Camera overheated. Let's start from scratch. So. We had put in our valves, right? Our, our shim stack, basically. So now we have a seal we need to change over here on this guy. All right. So that is not him. That is got This guy's too big. This has got to be him. Put a little bit of grease on him. And we slide him on. All right, so he is on. Now, there is a special way to put this on. If you look at this guy closely, on one side, he has one raised ring. On the other side, he has two raised rings. The single raised ring faces the shim stack, basically, okay? The dual rings faces up so we go in like that so we clean the internal threads of any loctite residue right now it comes time to assembling it all so 
First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of new Loctite and we're just going to put, and I mean a real small dab on the top flat part inside. Okay. And I mean a real small dab. So is it like literally just a small, small drop? Okay. Blow on it. So it sinks into threads. Okay. Okay. So we have the Loctite in the threads. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our spring and we're going to put it over the axle part, right? And then we're going to take our check shim and we're going to put it over the spring. Okay. A little bit tricky with gloves. Now the end result needs to be like this after we screw this guy in. Okay. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take them, we're going to put them over, be very careful here. And then we're going to just screw them in by hand. And the whole idea is to make sure that this guy floats the entire time. Okay. So let's lift them up a bit, lift them on just like that. There we go. As long as he goes up and down, we can screw this guy in and we know we're not going to pinch him. Just like that. All right. See, now we got full play up and down all the way around. We are not pinching anything. So now we can take this guy, we are clear, take our eight millimeter, tie him by hand, by finger, right? And then this is important, 1.8 Newton meters. We do not want to put too much pressure on this. This is just very little pressure. We do not want to go over the recommended spec. Okay. So there we go. 1.81. Done. Now let's test him to make sure that he has play because this guy's going to be going up and down. There we go. He is done. All right. Next, we have a seal over here that we need to change. So we're going to grab our pick. Just watch out because sometimes these little guys are tricky. Roll him out of his threads. And he should be able to just all the way down. Find his replacement, which has got to be this guy here. Yep. Put just a dab of grease on him. Roll him in. Put him over the threads. Be careful we don't damage him while putting him over the threads. My frame. While putting him over the threads. threads. Come on. Come on. Get in there, roll them down. Probably screw them in is going to be the easiest way now. So, and boom. He is in. Done. That is all the seals for the upper. All right, now we work on the lower. Actually, I lied. We have one more seal for the upper, and that's on the top part. This guy right here. Easy seal to change. Find his replacement. Not that guy. It's probably that guy. Well, either or, I think these are the same size. I think this guy fit him better. So this guy definitely put some grease on this guy since he's on the outside. Slip him through. And we slide them in. Yeah. Boom. Done. Take it, put them both on the side. We will finish with them later. Now for the lower assembly. Okay. As far as the damper body goes, make sure you clean it well with alcohol before putting it in the vise so it doesn't slip around, right? Uh, and then we need to remove the damper head. Now, not only was I wrong, but I double checked it and Fox website is wrong too. Usually these are 19 millimeters. 19 millimeter does not fit. It is 20 millimeters, which is pretty odd. I've never, I don't ever remember using a 20 millimeter on this guy. And the new one is also 20 millimeter. So definitely different, uh, unexpected. I thought I'm used to 19 millimeters. So we're gonna need a 20 millimeter wrench in order to take off 
type out. Oh. There we go. Loctite. And I can do it by hand, which means we're also going to need a 20 millimeter crow foot to time down. All right. And that is our damper shaft. So now what we can do with this guy, let's take him out. What we will do with this guy is clean all the threads. Okay. We're going to clean this guy of any kind of Loctite outside and in, make sure there's no debris on the threads, just like you see over here. Okay, and then what we can do, see this little, we wanna clean it best we can. So, grab a little paper towel, spray them down on the inside, grab paper towel, and I put away my dowel. It's okay. We'll use this guy here. Ta -da. Oh, so close. So close. Great. Now I gotta go get my dowel. I got ahead of myself and put the dowel away. And there we go. Actually, I'm gonna do it one more time. Yep, that's clean. Cool, we are done with that. Next, we need to separate this guy from this guy and change the seal, the seal on the inside, and we will be replacing the damper head. Okay, make sure you clean the shaft with alcohol so it doesn't slip around. All right. And honestly, I don't remember if this is a 10 millimeter. Yeah, it's 10 millimeter. I could just swap this, swap this around. Boy, I'm getting tired. I did not sleep well last night whatsoever. Okay. So. Okay, and I believe this guy is the eight millimeter. Or is he the seven millimeter? What do you do with the seven? Yep, he's the seven millimeter. So, it's gonna be a bit of a crack. There we go. It's gonna be pretty stiff. Should have applied heat on him actually, but reality is he doesn't go down with that much torque. He does have Loctite red. When it gets to a point where you could do it by hand, make sure you turn the rebound shaft the needle inside with the bolt in order to get them both to come out together. Okay. So make sure that this guy is turning with this guy. It's a little bit tricky to be honest. Okay. Nearly there. Come on. Boy, that's a lot of threads. Oh. Oh. Hey. <clears throat> Boy, I got lucky there. The detent ball. That's why you want them to come out together, basically. So that doesn't happen. Now I got to go in there and put the ball back in. Great. Not the end of the world, but that wasn't supposed to happen. Hmm.
Why is this not coming out? That's why it's not coming out. Okay, and that's where the ball goes into. So this guy's supposed to go in there just like that. So basically what's happening over here is you have two sets of threads. This guy screws inside, and this guy also screws inside. But they both screw in essentially differently, or are held on differently, okay? And basically, this you don't need to do this. These should have come out together. They won't always come out together as you, could ju as you just saw, right? So at the end of it all... Um, there's nothing on the inside over here that needs to get changed, right? There is no uh, uh, seal on the inside, but this shouldn't have come out, but technically it does. Centrally, that spring holds our de-dent ball, which makes the clicks whenever you click your rebound. So to put them back in, essentially what we're gonna do is tuck them in just like that and done. And there's your clicks, right? So. That's how this guy works. So we know it's still working. Now there is a seal over here that's gonna need to get changed, okay? And you know what? We might as well just change it now. So, grab your pick, go underneath. These little ones, hard ones, are always a pain in the butt. There we go. Okay, now this guy is obviously this guy here, so. Take a little bit of grease. Yet another another camera overheat. So I took the new O-ring, put grease on it. Now we're gonna put it over its tip and into its seat. A little bit tricky over here. It is tight. This is a hard. Oh, oops, nearly had it. Let me stab myself. Come on, get in there, man. I don't wanna. Get in there. And be very careful if you do this. In fact, I really don't recommend doing this. There we go. There we go. Now he's inside. Sweet. Okay. So this guy is done. So again, when removing the rebound shaft, we need to make sure that we remove both this nut and this rod at the same time, right? But if it comes out separately, it's not the end of the world, literally. I mean, this is designed to separate basically. So it's just one less thing if you don't do it, right? So um, we did not change this O-ring. So now let's change this O-ring. Underneath it. Pull it out. Okay. Yeah. All right. That has to be this one here. Yes, it is. New, old, little bit of grease. And put it over its lip into its seat, just like, come on, nearly there. There we go, into its seat. And that's all the old rings we have over here. All right, next we take out the shaft head. I'm gonna let the camera cool down again. Now to change out the rebound head, we pull out the old head. Let's see what shape this was in. See, there's quite a bit of play, actually. So, this is the old head, and this is the new head. Now, to put the head in again, we don't wanna just put it in because there is a quad seal in there. We do not wanna take a chance on damaging the quad seal, hence why they have these bullets. We take the bullet and we just put it in just like that. Is it absolutely necessary? No, but you're taking your chances by not using that. Okay. So then, uh, actually, we got to close this guy up now. Okay, now we need to put the needle back into the shaft right now. We need to make sure we had cleaned out the threads of all old Loctite residue. Then what we're going to do is put a drop of Loctite on the threads. Just one drop just like that. We do not need much Loctite red. Again, I got 277, could be 263. So now, just like we were supposed to un unthread both of these together, we need to thread them in together. So be careful we don't touch the Loctite. There we go. Put this guy in on one side, just like that. Now, 
thread both top and bottom together. So this guy and this guy, they should be turning together. Okay. Pretty odd the way they did this, but make sure they're constantly turning together. Oop, that's not good. There we go. Make sure they're turning together even when it gets hard. It's a lot of thread, so it's going to take a while. I don't want that to happen like that. Okay. All right. Am I bottomed out? I am close. Okay. Let's take our seven millimeter. Now they're turning together. There we go. Butterfingers. Now, I don't have a seven millimeter torque uh, crow's foot so I could torque it. So I'm just gonna do my best, but it's supposed to be about five newton meters, 4.8 newton meters. So basically not too tight, just finger tight. I would say just like that is good enough. All right. Clicks are working, so I am good. All right. Next up, we change our Teflon seal. We have a red one. This packet has three diff two different seals. So we're going to take the old red one, and we're going to put the new red one in. Oops. And that goes here. It's probably going to be too big. They're always a little bit too big, but they will shrink it to place when we put them in. All right. And next we close up the damper. Before we close them up, if you notice, this has a lot less play. It barely has any play side to side, whereas the other one had quite a bit of play. All right. So now we have our shaft. We have a hole and the other side has no hole. The hole goes towards the compression side. This side goes towards the bottom essentially right so let's make sure our threads are clean again one last time we're going to take a little bit of actually in a bit let's put this guy in here so again the holes go in the bottom all right now we're going to take a little bit of loctite blue and we're going to put it on the outside just a little bit oop too much that was literally too much i'm going to take some of that there we go. So we had put our Loctite in there. Don't put too much Loctite, right? So now we're going to take our shaft. Make sure you squeeze your Teflon ring so it fits inside. Just like that. Roll it in. Don't trap your fingers like I just did. Okay. And then we're going to screw in our head. Just like that. We're going to grab our 20 millimeter and we have to torque him down again, crow foot, 90 degree angle, 20 millimeter crow foot. We have to torque him down to 19.16.9 uh, Newton meters. <whistles> 16 there we go. And this guy is closed. Now we attach the upper part. Well, we fill it up with oil and then we put the upper part in. Now for the bleed. So we have our damper in the shaft or in the vise. Um, two things, three things really. 
One, when it's in the vise, you have to make sure that the shaft, the rebound shaft, can fully extend. Okay, make sure the table doesn't get in the way or else it's going to have to hang off the table. This vise is tall enough where I could set it up with a, uh, I could cycle the shaft, the rebound shaft, without touching the table. Two, this is our bleed hole. Uh, put it in the front so you could see it. Okay, this is a relatively easy fork to bleed or damper to bleed. Uh, and this is going to be our guide. Three, make sure the threads are completely clean. We are going to have to put Loctite um, when we put in the compression stack. All right, so the goal over here is we're going to fill it up with oil. First, we're only going to fill it up about two inches below the bleed hole, and then we're going to cycle the rebound shaft a few times so we could get the air out of the, uh, the ports in the rebound shaft. And then we're going to fill it up with oil until it comes out of the bleed port just a little bit, right? And then we're going to put in our compression stack, our compression stack all the way in, insert it and thread it and screw it down. All right. So let's begin. So as far as oil, five weight. One more thing I should mention. There's no way to do this job without making a bit of a mess. So grab some lint free cloth to catch any oil that's going to come out. All right. Just take it and wrap it around so it could basically act as a sponge for us. All right. So again, five weight. I have this little container I put it in. So we want to fill it up until about two inches under. My problem is that I'm a little bit blind over here right now. So I'm going to do it bit by bit because I honestly can't see a thing as the camera's in my way. Mm, this reflection, I still got way to go. Let's see where am I at? Oh, still got a way to go. Oop, don't want to do that. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm around here. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle slowly my rebound. All right. I think I need to put more. Yep, I need to put more oil in there. I can't see on so much reflection. Wow, that's so deceiving. That the light above me is reflecting off all the walls in there. Okay, I think I'm around here now. All right, so we're going to take our rebound shaft. And we're just going to cycle them through. <coughs> Oop. I'm going to add in a little bit more oil. Again, you probably aren't going to have the issue I have because you don't have cameras and cycle it fully. The whole idea is to get all the oil below. And all the air out of the system. Here. Do it one more time. Oh, that's good. I don't see any bubbles in there now. Cool. So now we're going to take the oil until you see it come out of the bleed hole. Just a little bit, right? And I'm nearly there. There we go. So you saw the oil come out of the hole. Now we know we're filled. Now, 
just in case. Let's tap it. Just to make sure there's no bubble stuck on the side. Okay. Try and help this clean this up a little bit. All right, so now, let's do it one more time. There we go. So now we know we are filled. Now, we are gonna grab a little bit of Loctite blue and just put on a thread. There we go, we don't need too much of it. All right, now, the whole goal is we're gonna take our compression stack and we are going to put it in. And oil is gonna come out, we don't have a choice. That's the whole idea. We're gonna bleed as we insert this thing and put it in. We need to fill up everything in here with oil. All right. Now you might want to grab a towel and cover it because oil is going to want to jet out of here is our issue. All right. It's going to be a little bit stiff to go down. There you go. All right. Cover the top because oil might want to jet out of here too. There you go. Let's see, it's going to take some the oil is going to want to come out. So this could make a mess. Just insert him until he bottoms out. No way to do this without making a mess. We could try, oop. All right, screw him in by hand. It's going to take a while. There's a lot of threads here. Okay. Now, we're going to grab our 26 millimeter and a ratchet. And just to show you that this is going to take a while, there's a lot of threads here. There we go. We just reached the end. Okay. Make sure he's tight. We're going to have to torque him down. Have our torque wrench, 16.9 newton meters. And before we torque down the top cap, we take our compression needle, put a little bit of oil on him. All right. Just lube the needle. More importantly, lube the o-ring then we're going to slide them in this is literally a bleed hole right now All right and then we're going to turn this guy three to four full turns there we go and he is locked in there let's try and absorb whatever oil on the top over here that came out like I said, these guys are pretty easy to bleed. All right, now we're gonna take our torque wrench. And again, as I said, 16.9. Make sure that the whole shaft isn't spinning. There we go, oops, 17.46, a little bit over. We're not the end of the world. And that's it. We are bled. We could test it out, make sure it's working. Right now we're probably in the locked position. There we go, now we're unlocked. And he's going up and down. Yep, all nice and quiet, listen to that. Not a peep, awesome. This is the lock position, he does not move one millimeter, literally not one millimeter. We are good. Our damper is blood and complete. Next step is to put them back in the fork. We have our damper in hand. We need to put it back into the upper. 
right? And before we do that, I just want to show you guys as far as what it should sound like. So when and how it should work. So this is our compression knob. Turn it all the way counterclockwise until it stops. That is our lock position. You should not be able to move the shaft a millimeter. I mean, nothing. It should be completely, completely locked just as is right now. So then take it and turn it about a half turn only. Now it should move. And it should be silent. You should hear no gurgling sounds, no swooshing sounds, absolutely nothing. Just pure silence. Just like that. Okay? So at the end of it all, we are good. Let's put it back into the lock position, just so we remember where it's at. Now we're gonna take it, slide it in, and thread it first by hand to make sure that it's in correctly, because these are fine threads. If you need to, turn it backwards until you feel it slip into its slot. There we go. All right. Now we turn it clockwise. Okay. So then we take our 26 millimeter. First, we'll use the ratchet until we hit the base. Okay. And then we take our torque wrench. 24, technically 24.8 newton meters. Okay. Now, just like with the air spring side, you're best trying to hold it down sort of like that to keep, give it control. And 24.4. We are done with our damper. So, all that's left is part two of the 50 hour service. Let's finish up the 50 hour service. So we have our foam rings that have been soaking in oil. We have our wipers. We have our tool that's gonna to put the wiper in and we're gonna need grease. Now the last two or last three seals we need is the sag ring and the two compression uh, rings for the bolts on the bottom, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to take our nicely soaked foam rings, and we're going to put them in their seat, just like that. One, make sure they're flat, not twisted, and then number two. Don't worry about the rest of that oil, we will use it. Okay, and number two. Done. Nice and flat. Then, we're going to take I'm going to take the spring off the ring. I'm going to put a little bit off the wiper. I'm going to put a little bit of oil, or a little bit of grease, I mean, just on the outside over here, just a thin film. This will make it easier to take out later. Okay. And then I'm going to put in my tool, open side down, right? Just like that. We're going to take it. Now, sometimes you could do this by hand. I know with rock shocks, usually you could do them by hand pretty easily. But in this case, I'm going to have to tap it. Give it a couple of good taps. Take it out. And we want it. Actually, that's perfect. That's nice and flush. Awesome. So you want it flush. You don't want it too far in, and you don't want it sticking out, right? So that's one. Let's grab the other one. A little bit of grease. That side. Take the rings out. Put in a tool. And then give it a couple of good taps. And oop, that one could use just a little bit more. It's like literally just a couple of hairs. Oop, a little bit more. Again, I like them flush. There we go. Nice and flush. Perfect. They're both even. Outstanding. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. Let's clean up this sticky gooey mess because this stuff is sticky. We don't need this guy anymore. Put him on the side. So now what I like to do is 
grab good amount of, uh, again, SRAM butter or, or uh, slick oleum, slick honey, and the wipers are concave, I try and fill it up on the inside. I have no idea how often this shock's gonna or this fork is gonna get service, so I'm gonna put a little bit more than usual. Again, this isn't mine. It's a friend's wife's. All right? There we go. I know it seems excessive, but at least we know we'll have a good amount of grease over time. All right. Now, we put the lowers into the uppers. Before we put the lowers into the uppers, we want to make sure that these stanchions are free of all debris. So we'll give them a good wipe down. Now, we have our, o our sag ring. We want to replace that. We have the new sag ring there, right? There actually is a bit of a chip in this shock or our fork. Okay. So now we're going to put in our new sag ring. This we do not, you do not want to grease this sag ring. Now what I do, I don't like installing the lower and the upper with the metal rings on. There's always a chance that they could get pinched, right? So basically I put them on first on their own, just like that. Okay. Then I take the upper, or I mean the lower, now, we want to clear any grease off the back that we can't reach or it will be difficult for us to reach. So we won't have to worry about it later. We only want grease on the inside. Remember, we never want grease on the outside collecting stuff. On the front, we'll be able to reach it. So take out all grease in the back, just like that. All right. So now we're going to take the lower. On one side, we're gonna try and slip it in, and then we are gonna do the same thing on the other side, just like that. Oh, sometimes you're gonna to have to jiggle it in. This could be tricky sometimes. There we go. And we are in. All right, let's leave the rings here for now. We will put them on in a bit. Next, we have to fill them up with oil. Now we have to fill up the lowers with oil, right? And it's gonna be different for each side. So on the air spring side, we are going to need 20 gold, okay? 20 weight uh, Fox oil. And we have the leftovers that we had inside the uh, container where we were soaking our rings. So now, we need to fill it up. So it's all dependent on your sh on your fork, right? So this is a 29, 34, uh, Fox 34, 130 millimeter. And according to the Fox charts, I need 10 cc of 20 weight oil inside the oil bath. Great, my finger just slipped. This is actually pretty challenging to soak up. It's so thick, this oil. Okay, so need more. I'm just gonna soak up what's in here. Grab my S15 CC, let's drop some of that out. It's about 12 CC. In fact, let's do this. Get rid of that oil bubble. I mean, that air bubble, and that should bring us pretty close to 10 CC, right? Nope, I'm still off by a little bit. Let's do this. Get rid of that air bubble. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stuff's real thick. Nearly there. All right, now I'm at 10 cc. Okay, so I'm gonna take the 10 cc. Now we wanna make sure that we have space in here. We wanna make sure that the shaft isn't sticking out yet, right? And we're gonna take this and we are going to inject it inside. Just like that. Boom, done. Our air side is done. Now, for the damper side. On the damper side, according to Fox's damper instructions, filling up the bath, um, the lowers with oil, 
five weight. Used to be 20 weight, but now it's five weight and 40 cc's of five weight. So I had taken 40 cc's and put it inside this syringe that I have that I use for bleeding some of uh, other fox, uh, fox forks. So here, if you notice over here, the shaft is close. So I'm gonna create a little bit more separation. There we go. And then I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna put him in and I'm just gonna let him slowly inject. And done. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is bring him down. And if you notice on one side, the axle came out and I gotta get him on the other side. And there he is. All right, now we close them up. Now we wanna get our nuts and our crush washers ready, right? So first, let's clean off the threads, make sure there's no oil on the threads or grease, All right? So then we're gonna take our new crush washer. We're gonna put it at the base of the nut. We're gonna thread it in by hand first. Now in my case, both sides are 10 millimeters. Grab our crush washer, put it in the nut. Do the damper side. 10 millimeters. Yours might be 15 on one side at the damper side and 10 millimeters on the other side. Take this guy, screw him down by hand as much as we could get him. And then take our torque wrench, 5.7 newton meters. All right, come on. Okay. Oh, that hurts. There we go, that's good leverage. Oh. There we go. 5.75 on one. And come on, get in there. There we go. Just odd trying to get this in camera. And where am I? For 5.50. There we go. 5.71 again. There we go. Both of those guys are in. So now let's put in our wipers. Let's clean around, I mean our springs back into the wipers. Before we forget, make sure you get it all the way around. The back part might be tricky. There we go. That's one. All right. And come on, get in there, dummy. There, come on. there we go. And that's two. Now, let's put in our cap temporarily. Well, actually, we got to fill them up with air, but we will need to put on our compression knob. Actually, before we put on compression lob, knob, let's put in our rebound knob. All right. So let's clean the inside. Take them. Now, the screw needs to sit in that dimple on the rebound shaft, all right? And it needs to fall inside it so it doesn't slip out. All right, don't crank it down too hard. And there we go. All right, rebound shaft is working. Now we finish up the compression knob. Now to fin completely finish up the damper side and pretty much the whole shock, all right? So we are going to take the compression knob and we're gonna turn it, we're gonna turn it counterclockwise until it ends, all right? Which is right there. Now that's the fully closed position, okay? Right there. So this way when we turn it to the fully open position, boom, we are done. And we could sort of test that, although it's going to be hard for me to test. If it's fully closed, I shouldn't be able to lick a bunch. Whereas if it's fully open, there we go. So we know it works. There's only two positions on this one, right? So now we're going to take the screw and we're going to screw it down two millimeter.
and that's it. Just finger tight. Don't go too crazy on it. And pow. Next, we put a little bit of air in it. Got shock pump, I'm just gonna fill it up with 50 PSI for now. And as far as I know for her, that actually might be more than enough. But I'm gonna fill it up with 50 PSI just to make sure and wait till tomorrow. See if there's any leaks or not. I highly doubt there will be. Come on, fill up. Where am I? Oh, I'm there. And basically, I'm very confident that we are good. So, unscrew this guy. Put in our cap. Come on. There we go. Now, last but not least, we want to give them one final wipe down. We don't want any oil on the outside or any grease that will collect. And there we have it, a completely rebuilt Fox Rhythm 34 fork. Again, this isn't a hard job. Actually, this is this fork is pretty simple considering you know modern forks. Uh, a lot of modern forks have a lot more complicated parts in them. So uh, this one over here, as always, just like all forks, the lowers, you should do them 50 hours. You're only doing yourself a favor. It's easy, once you get used to it, guys, it'll go by real quick, okay? The air spring, again, it's simple. You could even do it with the 50 hours. It's literally nothing more than popping off a ring, taking it out, taking out the old grease, taking out the air spring, uh, removing the old grease, replacing it with fresh grease, putting it back in there. It'll literally take you less than five minutes, but you could do it every 100 hours, every 200 hours if you want, that's up to you, right? Or between every 100 and every 200 hours. The damper, you don't need to do every 50 hours, that's for sure, right? Ultimately, the damper, I mean, depending on how you ride, where you ride, how hard you ride, that'll determine uh, how often you should change your damper. Or if you hear noises, right? If you hear sucking noises, squishy noises, so on and so forth, that means that, you know, uh, air is, uh, is, is getting into the system in some way or form or you're losing oil from the system. So, uh, but I am more than confident that this shock in particular, or this fork, in particular, you guys can absolutely do a service on your own and save yourself some pretty good bucks, okay? Now, typically for you guys, you would then set all your settings, your uh, PSI, your, your, your air spring uh, pressure, and your rebound uh, adjustment to what you had written down. But again, in this case, this is my buddy. He just bought a bike for his wife and I just rebuilt the shock and the fork for her as well as a dropper and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and it needs to get set up for her. So I have no idea what it's gonna look like. All that's left now is to put it on the bike and uh, finish it up. And uh, I think that was the last part of the bike actually that I needed to work on. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, please just give it the finger. If uh, hit the subscribe button so uh, you can see more videos as I release them, click the bell, bing, 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 so you can be warned when the new videos come out. All right. So until then, hope all is well with everyone, and we will be talking to you soon. Take care. Have a good one.